I'm encouraging you, as we're ending this year, and I'm encouraging me, and everybody you know, tell, I'm going to tell everybody I know, stop trying to make a word mean something, God. Mm. <laughs> because it won't change nothing in heaven. You can, you can twist it all you want to. You're not going to change what it means in heaven. And it doesn't matter what dictionary office is meaning down here on earth. Because the scriptures say his word is still in heaven. It's not still on earth. It wasn't still in Jerusalem. No, that was Zion. No, it wasn't still in Zion. It's still in heaven. Right. I mean, and then he brings it down. And whatever it meant when he said it, that's what it means today. Right. A good example. Gay is in the Bible. It's in the book of James. It means bright, brilliant, alive, beautiful. Just continue to add on to that. It does not mean homosexual. Amen. Now, whatever you twist mean today, the, the heaven doesn't care about it. And neither should you not. We can say it all day. I am gay in spirit this morning because I am bright and filled with the spirit of God in me. Mm -hmm. I am no shame in spirit. And you should be too. You should be fully colorful with the law all inside of you. Amen. And it should be able to be seen as you speak and as I speak. Mm -hmm. And I'll be afraid of the word Pentecost is for us and no one else. Holy Ghost speaking in the spirit because we talk and we are in the spirit as we speak. The spirit is talking, I'm not talking about speaking in some unknown tongue. That's why people twist me. We act like we're going to let someone take over Christianity from us. Mm -hmm. Then guess who will be cast out? Us. Daniel said the kingdom is not left to others. It's ours. Jesus said little flock fear not. It is the Father's desire to give you the kingdom. It wasn't enough to somebody else, brother. Right? And you can't give it to someone else. And you can't depend on someone else helping your children and my children understand the kingdom. And you can't depend on someone else helping your family understand when they are in God's strength. It is our job as saints to help the saints because the world will take care of its own. Mm -hmm. Jesus was clear. So mm -hmm. Matthew 1, 18, now the birth of Jesus was on this way. This is how it happened. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, she's already married, before they came together, and see, here we're going to deal with some denominational lies that are out there. And you know what? You know what's wrong with denominational lies? They make the birth of Jesus not a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because they try to make Mary a forever virgin. Mm -hmm. She's not. She's just a lady who had a baby without a man. Mm -hmm. And God put the seed in her. She's still a woman. She's not a super saint. She is a very blessed virgin. Yes. There's a bunch of virgins on the earth, though. Mm -hmm. She is one that the Lord selected. Mm -hmm. She is blessed above all women. That's all true. But she's still just a woman. And Mary's dead. Mm -hmm. And we've got to accept that. So this statement here, before they came together, is talking about sex. Right. As all Married only people are supposed to experience. Mm -hmm. Married only people are supposed to experience. He says, so she was found with child Margo, so she got a stomach starter, so he got a baby. And Joseph is upset, but he's a righteous, holy man, as we should be. And that's a lesson in here also on how to do a divorce, too, because they do have <coughs> And it's a way you're supposed to conduct yourself if you're going to be mm -hmm. Don't act the fool. Mm -hmm. And I mean just that, like yes. a son. Right. Like one of the foolish women that Joe told is what? Act accordingly in good times and bad as a righteous saint. Mm -hmm. Do everything above board as a righteous saint. This man has been divorced at one, but he's not going to make a public spectacle of her. Mm -hmm. And it says here, then Joe will hold him being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away private. You know, put her away private. Give her a right, you know, okay, I'm going to take all out of the street. This is a woman, you know, and that's crazy. <laughs> Although she's got a baby by another man in his mind. But guess what? It isn't about her being unfaithful. It's about, is he faithful to his God? People always want to say, well, look what she did to me. You don't know what I've been through, brother. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Are you still faithful to your God? Amen. You're going to hit him in the head with a rolling pin, throw hot grits on him, beat him with a skillet like on a deal? <laughs> or are you going to tell them goodbye and handle yourself on myself as a saint? In any situation that you deal with, 
be getting terminated on a job, having to terminate someone, any situation. This is the, 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 the thought is, is Jesus saves people how? He doesn't save us by putting us in a building saying Church of Christ. He has a process going to go through. But it's going to show why, because everyone involved with Jesus is just and righteous except his enemy, of whom he is not going to save. And so he says here that he was with it, not to make an example, not to put away from him. Verse 20, but while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. This is how Jesus is connected to David. This is the only way Jesus is connected to David. It does not ever say Mary, thou daughter of David. Joseph, thou son of David. It is his only connection to the throne. He has no other way of Israel or Israel. Being expected to honor him as a king. He's the son of David. And Joseph doesn't have to be a king. He doesn't have to be born of a king. He just needs to be kin to David for the next king to come through his law as prophecy before his being fulfilled. Fear not to take it to thee, Mary, thy wife. Now, 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 now when you read that, you see, what well, it already matters. He take unto her. Take it unto you. Just go on and bring it on. Keep on what y'all do. Sleep with her at the appropriate time. That's your wife. Not go get married. They're already married. Mm -hmm. That's why people try to twist this. They are already married. That's why he has to put her away with being divorced privately. Right, right. This is a problem. And this is not like an American way. Mm -hmm. An American way, an espousal, walk away with another little ring, give another commitment through the mouth. You haven't got married yet. This is a Jewish system of marriage. And if you try to bring it to America, you're going to lose the thought that they're already married. A lot of brethren try to teach this until they have sex. They're not married. And you're wondering why I'm taking time to do this, brother, because this is why some of us don't know what we're talking about when we hear someone that's telling us something. They're married. <laughs> No, there is no consummation through sex making the marriage valid. It's valid now and he has not touched her. All showing she's still a virgin. That's why this, if the story is incorrect, then he's not born of a virgin. Right. It's a lie. Right. See, out. that's why the Bible is saying, he no, no, no. The Lord says, because it's all going right. to connect. Right. If it zips like a puzzle, it's connected because he drew the line. And brethren, I'm for one and you and me, and begging and pleading before God, I beseech you, as Paul said, don't touch the meaning of the word. Please, if you're not going to go to heaven, leave it as it is. It says that this child is conceived in her. Is I'm going to go. Now, you know, when we look at this, you know, we think that normal people on the earth can't understand this when we say these things. You know, that child or Holy Ghost. We act like we got to do some high level explanation. Joseph is not some genius. He's not even a king. It doesn't say he's a prophet. He understands the statement. The child of the Holy Ghost. He, he, you don't hear him go, how can these things be? <laughs> you, see, you hear that, right? Amen. Amen. You know why? Because he's a believer. Amen. Nicodemus asked us, he's an unbeliever. And mm -hmm. Jesus called him. He said, you don't believe. Mm -hmm. See, when you believe, somebody said, this child of the Holy Ghost, you go, okay. Jesus died and was buried again on the third day. Okay, now if you're an unbeliever, you're going to pull out Amen. a wooden sword and go back. You're going to try to fight. Mm -hmm. Brethren, always listen to your voice as you give an answer to someone <laughs> shouting and see if you sound like Jesus. And I'm going to see if I still sound like Jesus. Because sometimes we can just listen to ourselves and say, man, that didn't sound nothing like what Jesus was saying. Because we're challenging everything he's about. And he cannot say this. And I don't mean we this room, I mean we on the earth. Amen. And so he says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Key word, his people. This isn't talking about the Jew only. No, this is not talking about the Jew only. Because all nations shall fall in the Zion of which this gentleman, Jesus, is the Savior. He is saving only those who are He. And He has to make you and I His. Mm -hmm. And if you ever alter that pattern of how you get in, or you think somebody else can get him in because they got a Bible like we got today talking about Jesus, you'll never get him in. And then you and I will be stopped at the gate also. Mm -hmm. That is, we'll say, we got a song, one way to the gate. Mm -hmm. That way 
means not walking, that means how you get there. Amen. So it says in verse 22, as Matthew writes, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with them. God is already with them. God has been with Israel since they came out of Egypt. God has been with Israel before in the, in the form of the Hebrew. Other side of the flood. Abraham, that's his name. He's the other side of the flood of God. God has been with him. So why does it mean God with Because that is God spirit in Jesus. And he is a man also walking around. Faith, and everywhere he goes, God is with Amen. us. That's right. Where he is at. That's what the name means. God is walking around. But not God like who is his father above him. No, God is in Jesus and everywhere he goes. When he speaks, some of us have a tendency to child because he's the son. People do that all the time. And that's why he called him the son. He says, I'll be like a son. Because that's what we do. And like we challenge the lesson. See, he's the lesser of God. Oh, yeah, he's the lesser. And we love to challenge the lesser. That's why we challenge each other. Mm -hmm. Because we're less than Christ. But listen, when we speak in this Christ's word, it has the same knockout Tyson punch as in Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Same one. Amen. You don't have to worry about if they obey or listen. Just say it. Just Amen. say it. And so that way he said, then Joseph raised from the sleep, then as the angel of the Lord had been him and took unto him his wife. He's just going to pull her away. He's going to go, I'm keeping you. I'm keeping you. And knew her not. That also means sex. Mm -hmm. Why am I stressing that? Because there, there are some teachers that say, no, nah, she was fell virgin. I'll tell you, brought forth the first God and called his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is just a woman and a man. Mm -hmm. And they love their son like you love your children. And they fed him. Jesus had to use the restroom. His mama changed. He did not change himself because he was God's son. His daddy taught him to be a carpenter. He did not have wisdom of carpentry because he is God's son. Amen. The scriptures say he grew in stature and height. So we know he wasn't born wrong. He couldn't have came out that woman small. So, right, right. so just as he grew in stature, he also grew in wisdom. Right. That means Jesus did not know the things of an adult as a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. You have to grow in wisdom to become wise. Mm -hmm. And he grew in favor with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus became more liked by God as he continued. Mm -hmm. And brethren, that's for you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I am convinced the saints are afraid to be great. I'm convinced some saints. We're afraid to be great. And I mean great, I mean great spirit. We are afraid. I think some of us are afraid not to sin. I really believe that. As if we're going to get so strong, you know, you know, like something wrong. Some, why am I saying? Because some of us are afraid to really say, I study the Bible every day. Just like I eat every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like as if there's something wrong with that. You gotta apologize. I've heard people try to fix it. I've heard some saints try to fix it. Well, you know, we better tell the word, but you know, we don't know if it's really literally to read every day. Why would you say that? Because you don't plan on reading every day. Y'all don't plan. And they get mad at one. You know, anybody say that you don't plan on reading, you try to look at an escape door. Because you would say, no, it says we're supposed to read every day. We're supposed to look at it every day. Because it's your soul feeding. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not just thinking about it, looking at it. Because you should want, and I should want, to make sure that we're getting a steady diet and is there a repair maybe needed? Amen. You should be reading the scripture, and I should too, right. about the stuff you know that you personally have wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, now, that's I'm not going to always hit that like you want. Mm -hmm. You know that's going to come, but you got to wait till you hear it. But you know what's wrong with you, and I know what's wrong with Amen. you. Amen. And we need to be studying that stuff. Yeah. And, and we need to thank God when somebody say something about it. Oh, right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. That right. means the Holy Ghost is there, and he's trying to help us too. Amen. Amen. From another source. Amen. So we should be glad. Now, this gentleman, this man, Jesus, is going to save his people. How is he going to do it? 
doing? Look at Luke 13. Jesus says there's got to be some changes made. You can't stay the way we are. Luke 13 and 3, Jesus says, I tell you, Nate, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Why does he say that? Because in verse 1, he says, they were present at the season. Some that told him of the Galilee and to his blood, Pilate had mingled with that sacrifice. So Pilate had mingled the blood of the sacrifice, man, you know, made a mockery of it. And, and in their mind, they began to go, like, you know, like, yeah, see, he was a hideous people. Hideous death. He says, suppose that these Galileans were sons above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. That's how people think. Verse 2. People think sometimes if somebody they grab him and they torture him, oh, he must have been a sinner. You know, you, that's poor judgment. Jesus said, these are not the words Peter said. Unless you repent, you're going to perish too. He said, you're going to perish like that too. Verse 4, they said, of those 18 and for whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, thinking that they were sinners of all that blood of Jerusalem. They just knew how they thought. He said, I'll tell you, man, but except you repent, we shall all like find perish. Look what he says in verse 6. A certain man had a big family of things, and he came and saw proof thereon and found out. So now, now, this is the story. Now, Jesus is the Savior. He has come to save his people. His name means that. So he's going to teach now how it's done. As a man that has a that has a vineyard, a fig tree, forgive me, planted in the vineyard. Now notice this now. Let's look at this again. Look at verse 6 again. See, because we can read over stuff. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. I know vineyard is where grapes grow. Mm -hmm. Fig tree is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, he came and saw fruit down and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, notice his vineyard, his vineyard. He said where he is. The Lord is now working with other churches, brother. Amen. All right. All right. Everything is his. The Father is the representation of the owner, and the dresser is Jesus. He's going to be the one working on the body, on this tree. <laughs> And so he is saying that I don't mind here. His vineyard, his vineyard, and he was working in it, the dresser. Mm -hmm. And so he says, cut down while covered in the ground. What are you digging out of the ground for? He says, why? Look, it's not growing no fruit. And this is how God felt about you and me. Killed them. Yes, brethren. Yes. When you and I sin, a sin unto death. God is done with us. Ask Adam and Eve. He is done. And he, out of the kindness of his very own heart, has compassion to make a way for us to be saved without us being worthy or having done anything to deserve. Mm -hmm. That is powerful love. So for us to ask the Lord to distribute a love greater than that and to save us another kind of way, that is blasphemy. Because a lot of times we forget who's really angry. Jesus is not mad up. It's his father that wants to kill us. Mm -hmm. And so what does he say on the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He is begging and pleading for your life and mine. Mm -hmm. But his father is ready to destroy us at the end. We should not take lightly coming to church the brethren thought this is such an important, I commend from the chief answer, from the person who was helping, and maybe others of you, for getting a better facility till this guy can get his property in line. This extra money, but for the comfort and the normality which we're used to, it was a comfort. So there'd be no reason not to come to church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Shall we not appreciate and be thankful? Because that's the law that their hearts say, hey, look, mm -hmm. get this done. These children gonna get tired of this after a while. Amen. Because of what they're wrong for. Amen. 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 So says leaders lots of them. Go. Let's move on this. Because you're just that important to him. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we should make him just that important to us and appreciate it, not just come to church on Sundays, but come with a motive. I want to see how I can be changed to be even greater. Yeah. I want to see how I'm going to be better. Yeah. I want to see the effects. Well, I can't wait to see the effects. As soon as I leave the building, I want to see the effects. Mm -hmm. 
that's coming, you know, oh, we're going to church again, is it almost over? And I know some people are all, all with it, and I'm going to be. I know. I'm going to be poking and working, but I'm watching it now. Nevertheless, let's appreciate what the Father has done for us. Amen. Amen. Giving us his greatest prize, his greatest mm -hmm. gift, his son Jesus. Yeah. There's nothing great he has. This is his best. When we say give our best, we're not talking about coal, money, food, and that's and we're talking about spirituality. He expects our best mm -hmm. spirituality. Not try the best. Mm -hmm. And we can do it, brother. Right? And we can help each other accomplish it as well. And so he says here, and he actually said, Lord, let it alone this year. And I had three years. That's another completion. That means he has completed through with the tree. Fig tree is not worth it. He said, Till I shall dig about it and done. And this is his moment, verse 9. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that shall thou cut it down. That's going to be a cutting down. So he said, but, but give me one more year. This is what Jesus is pleading for your dying. Mm -hmm. At some point, you and I have to be done around, and the Lord, believe this, this is the story of every man. I'm going to say, I want this one cut. Why are you wasting time? Give me one more time. Now, brethren, if we don't act on the one more time, mm -hmm. this isn't just about some saint. This says every saint mm -hmm. reaches a point in the vineyard where we quit producing. And the Lord already shows, and we talked about it a few Sundays ago in a story where when he walked by a tree, when Jesus is ready to eat, he wants to eat. When he's ready for you and I, to come and present ourselves to him, brethren, you don't get off telling me to say, wait, hold on, wait a minute, please. One more time. We saw the tree, we remember the story, it was not even its time to produce fruit. And he said, don't let nobody eat on it anymore. He made it. And they said, man, this tree is wisdom. When they came back, they said it's wisdom. But it wasn't time to produce fruit. He didn't care. He said, it's time to eat. If you're not producing it when I'm ready, it's over. You and I cannot be like that tree. Mm. Peter talks about it. Jews talk about it. late autumn trees. Why? They produce only in season. That's not good. Those trees are plucked up. People talking about the evil. Trees that do not produce regularly. Brother, you don't want to be a tree. That's why it's not my season right now. Mm -hmm. I'm mad. And I don't care what the reverend say. I am angry. And I'm going to remain angry until I see that I can change. You're not producing fruit. When the Lord comes, he knows. This time, he knows. He knows. It's your non-fruit producing season. He says, I'm fine. Mm. Remember the tree out of season. Why did he ask to have fruit? Because that's what he's saying. I don't do like that. Oh, they're not producing. Let's go get it. Because then when he comes, he says, hey, you know there's no fruit on you. But master, Matthew 7, no. It's insufficient. So, he has to dung around us. He has to fertilize. He has to make a job. Not the people you know, not me, he. And so when he speaks and says what has to be altered, it has to be altered, brethren. Don't play around and waste time. Because if you're not producing that season, he could call on you and me. And he knows it's not a production season. That's the message he said. So he puts forth his effort to save us by applying the words that alter what you and I are. Look at Matthew 15. Now you know, this, this is a very puzzling area here because it deals with all the error that the righteous will have before them. Matthew 15, he says in verse 1, Then came Jesus to scribe Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do you disciples transgress the tradition of the elders. But they wash not their hands and they eat bread. Now I will tell you, we have known through scientific fact that unwashed hands can kill people. We know. So when you look at this naturally, I really don't see a problem with people washing their hands. I said, I'm ready. You too. You look at it, you be like, there's really nothing wrong. Why is he dealing with that? There are bigger issues than this. Why is Jesus dealing with it? Because this is an issue where someone is trying to take a small thing and make a doctrine out of it. Amen. And Jesus has a 
big problem with people that do that. They said, saints, that's nothing bigger to talk about than somebody washing their hands. Father needs to say then to not to offend them, wash. Huh? He said about the taxes, which cost money. So it's not to offend them, Peter. Knowing you have lied already, and everything didn't say you know, you already lied. You know we don't pay taxes. Because we're children in the city. When our father said, but not to offend them, go cast your net, get the corn and be in the fish box enough for both of them. Why they say then wash? Because that's about money. He already corrected Peter for lying. But we don't want to offend these money grubbers because we got to get to the other world. But you saints making a new doctrine about what cleanses, he said, I got a problem with that. You would think that don't even make sense. It does make sense to heaven, but it needs to make sense to you and I. See, because the things that don't make sense to you and I, the Lord already said, my mind is way above yours. He says, you thought I was all together one like you. He said, I'm not. That's what he keeps saying, I'm not like you. So how does Jesus say about by turning our minds, every minute, towards God through instruction, brother? They had been doing this for a long time. Even the disciples were into it. So he says, okay, but they didn't follow it. No, they didn't wash their hands. Why? What's wrong with your disciples, man? A tradition of that. They're hanging around you, Jesus. You do some radical things, saying radical stuff, but I say. Every time we hear you saying, but I say. So we've been to trick you now. Why don't y'all wash your hands? The elders brought this before, and that's in the Old Testament. Old to you. Listen to the elders. They said, why well, do you also transgress commandments by your tradition? You know, he has a problem. But this is, y'all remember, saying this is a young man. They don't believe, they're not going to even accept these God's son. And he's saying to all the men, but he's telling them, he don't care about no age. And it isn't just because he's God's son, he is right on the point. And he needs to speak, and he does. For God commands, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses his father and mother, let him die to death. Now that's the commandment. But what are they doing? But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it is a guilt, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You know how many people. Tell young people today, you know, well, baby, you grow up, you got your own family, your children. Your mama gonna just have to understand. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now some saints give advice like that. Your mom gotta understand. What? You ought to be glad you got a mama still living to serve. Mm-hmm. You don't know how to tell your wife, baby, I'm gonna do what we gotta do, but I got to go do this for mom. Nah. Well, honey, I'm gonna do what you say, and I love you, you're a great man. I've got to go do this for my daddy now. I'm obligated. You understand? You you grow, you pay your own bill. I'm obligated. All of your father and mother. Mm-hmm. The Lord is not gonna budge on that. Amen. And mm-hmm. you shouldn't budge in your home. Mm-hmm. It don't matter if your kid is six feet taller than you. Mm-hmm. Don't budge. Because you're teaching them that they're equal to you, and brethren, they are not equal to you. Amen. 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 If you do that, you're going to have them when they're grown thinking they're equal to God. Mm. Just tell them and then apply the needed pressure to help them get the thing right. Be it discipline through physical, discipline through taking things, or discipline through asking the door swings out. And brother, you know, he doesn't say, oh, man, I said that, listen, I told one of mine to get out and they did get out. <laughs> And I meant it. And it broke my heart. And I cried like a baby. But that's the way it is. Because mm-hmm. I would rather cry on earth than to cry in hell. Amen. We need to understand what we're doing on this earth. We don't right. need to change no rules and no laws. Right. God has to turn your mind toward him through his son. Amen. So he's got a problem here with the so-called Lord. It says in all of not verse 6, his father and mother, he says he shall be free. He's free of the commandment now. If you got no green in his pocket, he's free of the commandment. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by a tradition. Now he isn't satisfied with that people just doing it and the fuss about it. He's dissatisfied that the leadership is alive that. He says, you hypocrites, the pretenders. Well did he sighs, which is Isaiah prophesied, he's saying, these people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain. Now see, you know, after verse 8, a lot of times, saints, and I've done it, and we do it, we don't read first. It's verse 8. Yeah, it's verse 8. No, no. Huh? 
hold on, hold on. This thing has some heavy weight in verse 8. But in vain, the word, that means the rest of your days, your worship is empty. That's about just then on that one. I mean, we like to do that. On that one point, they're, they're, on that one point, they're off. This is only one point. And he says their worship is empty. The proskuneo is of no value to me. You can't be saved. And he came to save. His name means save. But I can't save you because you kicked aside a commandment that you thought was necessary. I said, well, we're going to do this. But he said, Isaiah already said, people that do that, their worship is in vain. And here's the deal. Teaching for doctrine. Teaching for curriculum. Teaching for a lesson plan. Teaching for a message. The commandments of me. I'd rather just stop and let that symbol return the heat on that real low, that it's symbol. And think about anything else that normally is a good thing, like hand washing, that you're teaching as a doctrine from a man's instruction. It don't mean commandment means to make it, it means instruct it. Your worship is I believe with God. So he has to turn the mind for the worship to be received by God. Wow, look at John. John chapter 4. And that's on anything. I would even wonder why Jesus would talk about something as minuscule as that much because it was being formulated into a teaching pattern as was the one about honor, father, and mother. It was just another teaching pattern. And, and so it struck his mind. Yeah, y'all got a loss because the other guys said, and many other such like things you do. And so he says in John chapter 4, and in verse number 20, our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men have to worship. This woman is saying, I'm at Jacob's well. Jacob is my father. She's laying claim to it. She's a Samaritan. The chance of her having any Jewish blood in her is slim enough because they were gutted out, they were removed. But she is laying claim, I'm a Jew just like you. I'm just as holy as you. And we worship in the mountain. But in essence, she's saying people like you, you Jews, say we got to go to Jerusalem. Mm. Translation today, it would be me, I worship in the Catholic Church. And you Church of Christ folks, y'all got to go to y'all church. Mm. So just mm. I believe she, Keith was involved in Church of God in Christ. He just said, and you Church of Christ folks. Some of you may have been for the Methodist Church. He said, and you Church of Christ folks say, right? Because mm. he is our head. So he said, Woman, believe me, I come when you should neither worship or neither in his mouth forgive me, nor yet as rules and worship for. He says, Why? Because there's a change coming. He came to save. And people love to talk about his birth, that was the hope of salvation. But when Jesus opens his mouth and starts to give the instruction on what saved, Everybody's face is twisted now, and heart is angry because he's going to intentionally take the sword and strike everyone because he loves us. And he's, he's not going to miss anyone. He's going to go down the line. And, and as he said, it, it's going to be exactly what he knows is going to challenge us so he can save us. Because that's why his name is Jesus. So he says, you worship, you know not what? See, if we try to talk to God, we don't know him. We don't know what he wants. Not by having not been informed, but by rejection of the information. We know what we worship. We who? The Jews, his people. So we know we worship. Say so that part is always right. He says, for salvation is of the Jews. Brethren, God has never brought forth his word that I have in a group that accepted it of which he could use to talk to the rest of the world. He's never done that. After things got so bad, he picked Noah 120 years. I need you to tell him, Lord, you tell them. Because you might. Abraham, look, look, I don't need to get be ready. Get your folk ready. Cut them in the house with the sword. Anybody don't get covered tonight, can't eat this meal. Because you might. I want you to tell them. Amen. And he got to Moses, okay, the mother wants you to get up here, stand back here on the lawn, and tell him because you mind. Mm -hmm. 
and Jesus, my son, whose name means Savior. I want you to save them, and I need you to tell her what's making me mad and how to fix it because you're mine. And church, you and I and all of us on the earth that bear his name are his, and we have to tell him. And no, you can't work with nobody on top of this line of the church. No. No, you can't expect them to teach your kids morality because that's your job in mind. I know it's nice and convenient to send people to school. What you try to do is they'll go to school and learn how to make some money, be wrong or true, and to read. Get good reading now, they can read with them, especially the Bible. But if you try to get the school to teach your children to rise, you're wasting your time. You'll be so disappointed. Because that's your job and mine. Now, you can bring them to the church, and we can do the job for you. But God will have a problem with you as a judge. So he wants you to be a father. And he wants me to be a father. But I can tell you now, you can bring them to church, and they will learn morality. And I wonder why people don't bring the children to church. I wonder. It must be we do not believe the church is a place where they can learn morality mm -hmm. and how to be saved of the Savior who named me Savior for the Savior. Mm -hmm. We've got to bring them to Jesus. We must take them there and make sure that they will listen and we need to ask them what did you learn? Mm -hmm. That's why you have to wait till after they eat because the mind doesn't work like things and ask them soon. I'm going to go, what did you learn? Yeah, they might go, well, let it kind of resonate with me. They start talking to you about the lady that day, maybe Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I remember we slept this in Bible study. Mm -hmm. That's how we think, just as they come out the crowd, what did you learn? You must have listened. Oh, don't do this. It's because mm -hmm. people, your mind don't work like that. I'm telling you, your mind is not like that. It's not a machine like that. It's been entered and it hit here. No, it doesn't work like that. See it. They change. Are they still talking crazy to you? It's Tuesday, you still talking crazy? It's like the word should have resonated by now. Did you learn anything in Bible school? Now you can do that. Or did they forget to talk about that part, which is possible? I thought you already knew that part, how to talk to people, right? Especially your father and your mother. Do you know your children are supposed to be obeying, that, especially they remember the church, where when you say, I don't want you to get high on drugs, you know they're not supposed to do that? Do you know they have a major dysfunction if they can't obey? Because they already have the spirit which the word sticks to like glue as it is enhanced by the Holy Spirit. You should be alarmed and sore displeased at their performance. Because it's just like pouring water in a cup, it holds. It old, brother. So that means we need to hold the church accountable also to make sure that we have people to teach all the levels of our children. Mm -hmm. You should hold the church accountable, brother. That's right. Amen. Because this is the school right. about the salvation of Jesus, mm -hmm. the Savior. Not this one, all the churches. Amen. You can't learn no way. I'm sorry. So he says in the verse 23 about the hour coming, he said, and now he's going to true worship. Well, that's a very critical word. True worship. As we wrap up, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. How does Jesus say? He has to give you and I feel with the new spirit. Amen. That's how he says. And there's no hope in praying for nobody past that. If you don't have the spirit, it's over for them. And if they grieve them, first Thessalonians chapter 5, then it is over for them to with the spirit. And your thrust and your hope and my thrust and my hope is that he says, the Father is seeking son. Look what he's doing. The Father said, it's a whole group over here. Hey, we love you, Father. And you it ain't like, yeah, yeah, you got the Holy Ghost? Okay, come on. Y'all see that tomorrow, come on. Mm -hmm. You go on, and we go on over here in this other room, and y'all can worship. That's what he's saying. Because I'm not looking for nobody without the Spirit. That's what he's saying. That's the beauty of what the people are talking about today, is that's what Jesus came to bring. Mm -hmm. 
He said, my father gave me a promise. That's why everybody dies. I can die. Tell you, my father gave me a promise. And I know his promise. His word, his commandment, is everlasting. Jesus said, I'm going to die. I say nothing crazy on this promise. And God, I get the promise. It's the spirit. And I'm going to give it to them. And I know it can make it nothing. Can't make it without it. He says, God the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Jesus said through the disciples, that was a certain system you have to accept before you even get enrolled into the school. It's a system. He said, Moreover, through Paul, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which you have also received, and wherein you stand. See, we stand. Why we have to keep giving the gospel when it's done? Because we stand in it, brethren. You should be upset if a brother preaches a message and doesn't give the call. How to be saved? It's good news. You said, Yo, wait a minute. We stand in that. Wait, I ain't got nothing to stand on no more. Mm. He didn't tow it down. Mm. He said, By which you also are saved. That's how Jesus say. If you keep in memory, how do you keep it in memory on the head that God will meet? <laughs> what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain, I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose the third day. Again, according to the scripture. Look at Mark. Let's talk about these all the time. Because it is where we stand. If we keep in memory, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, Jesus said, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel and every creature. He that believe in the baptized shall be saved, but he that believe in not shall be damned. And these things shall follow them which believe. In my name shall they cast out them. They shall sleep in your tongue. They shall take up servant. And if they drink any dead thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now see, an individual continues to try to do that at the first Corinthians 13 and verse 8 following said, this will come to an end. We well, already know he doesn't have to walk. You don't have to mark. Yeah. And we're done. We're not, we're not trying to fight you, friend. You don't have to mark because you're going to be trying to do that. Amen. That was done. See, if you can't say it with belief, then you don't have to mark. But if you don't so much water, the spirit is no longer working with us. The water of delusion, where the word is watered down. So why the word is used? Quench. <coughs> the fire. He's too hot. It's too aggressive. It's too much like Jesus. And he's making me like Jesus. But that's how you have to be in order for you to be his people. And he can save us. So when Peter preaches Acts chapter 2, these are all saved Jews, so to speak. Man, that's traveled all the way from land. So what does he say when he comes up to them? He says, Jesus is both Lord and Christ. In verse 36 and verse 37, when they heard it, they said they were pricked in their heart. Of course, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to prick the heart. I mean, the heart gets shook up. And said, as the people of the rest of the apostles, the man and brother, what shall we do? Then said Peter to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. These are promises. Look what he said. For the promise, that's why it's so important that he came. That's how he can't save without a problem. There's no salvation without a problem. Mm -hmm. He said this to you, unto you, to your children, to all that are far, even the men of the law, like God's God, and the men of the word that he testify and exhort, which is encouraged, save itself from this ancient water, which is a perverse generation. Then they glad to receive his word, were baptized the same day. They were added to about 3,000 souls. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. We have to do that the same. And fellowship, we can only worship and work with the righteous. He said, and breaking your bread and prayer. How are we going to have our inner faith? How are we going to hand out turkeys with inner faith people? Right? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yes, <laughs> fellowship. Mm -hmm. Who started that? Verse 47, praise God and faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Jesus got bent out of shape about a hand washing doctor and took it to the next level and started bringing up all the dirt about what they teach about all the problems about because of a hand washing state. Seems he's a little different than the saints today, isn't he? About people just saying things. Oh, that ain't that important. Don't worry about that. We got bigger fish to fry than that. You don't want to get fried and God skid in the See, I don't know about to talk you out of the <coughs> blessing. 
Nevertheless, Acts chapter 8, you have to be given instruction, it says verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto them Jesus. How come Philip wasn't confused? He guilty? He's a Jew, proselyte, come all the way from Ethiopia. You mean God didn't bless him with understanding? No, because he's not his. Yes. He came to save his people. Mm. And Philip's trying to help him become Jesus' people. So he commanded, he says that it, he sees us while he's very excited. Verse 36. See, he is well, but the enemy be baptized. And Philip said, If thou believe in the Lord of my heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the chariot to stand still, and then went down both into the wall. Both Philip and the unit being baptized. Why baptize a man if he's already saved? Inwardly. And it's out. Who is the hour being shown to? There's nobody else but two guys out there. He has to have an operation done on him. Colossians 2, verse 8, following if he does it, he will not be saved. Look at 1 Corinthians 12. <coughs> Look at verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized in one body. You know, you could get baptized in a building, say church Christ, and you still won't be saved if you didn't believe all you are. No matter what the brethren say, he is now saved. I'm about to be there. You're not going to be saved. Unless the Holy Ghost will come up there. And well, he didn't say that. I guess I got to do it. No. His heart's dirty. I'm not touching it. <laughs> His lips speaking, but his heart is far from him. What does I say? What does that tell him? I'll touch it. So you have to watch it. Listen what he said. Now, someone like a say, says, no. And he said, well, we do the Gentile, we'll be father, friend, have all been made to drink into one spirit. We believe that. Peter said, he said, first 21, the like figure went to even baptism does also. This is the key three letter word. Now save us. Not to put anywhere the fifth of the but the answer of a good counsel to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ is going to hell. Right hand of God, angel, authority, power, principality, everything that exists is under Jesus. And the same Jesus says in Revelation 2 2. You know why this is so beautiful? You know when the devil put people in prison who are not the Lord, they stay till they die and they then go to hell. Mm -hmm. This is a gift from the one who's named Jesus, whose name means saved. Do you know the sin that we have committed will cost us eternal salvation if it was not for the sweet name of Jesus? He said, Fear none of those sins, but it stops yourself with the Lord of the devil shall carry some of you in prison. You may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a calm life. Really? Nobody should have to make us come to church. That's why you were coming back to church. All I said, I love you. These brothers have worked hard to get another building until these problems be repaired. Let's try to come back tonight if we can and show them thank you for all this hard work. Mm -hmm. What else do we have to do? What else do we have to do? That's important. You know that there's going to be some people, and I want to see it. They're going to be at church all day and probably till the night. <laughs> Talking about Jesus and not even here. Mm -hmm. Something's going to be wrong at the judgment for some of us. Mm -hmm. I promise you, they will be there all day. Taking off their shoes and putting on bunny slippers, walking around. <laughs> you and I have been asked for every time we gather because we are here. We know, and you know you That's living. And we can, and we will. If you need to be baptized, we got a building with plenty of water. We'll take it out right now. Right now, and we got water right outside. We got two spots for water. Like John had been water and joy. So don't worry about that. All the brothers that I follow, everything is great men of God. Nevertheless, you have to let us know you believe Jesus Son of God with all your heart. But if you're here in your middle of church, you have to repent too as well as I We cannot go to heaven if we are not prepared. You can lose your salvation. Just as you got first work in 927, all guaranteed. If you think you're on the bubble, come back to the law. You haven't been to the law in a long time? Ask for strength to keep coming. Ask for him to show you a way to come to church every Sunday. Ask him to show us a way to come to church and be happy mm. every Sunday. And let's try to make somebody else happy. Amen. Let me pray. I'll come out together. We stand together. So. <laughs>